Hi, welcome to Gabbing with Girlfriends, and I'm Gloria Butler, and I'm my only guest. I'm talking to myself again today, and sometimes it's just kind of nice. It's just kind of, I do it all at my own pace, and I don't have to share. I'm not very good at sharing, I think, except I do. I like having guests, and I love having Gabby. She's not even really a guest. She's more like a co-host, but... Um, but today I just felt like being on my own, just one of those kind of solo days. So I hope I hope everybody's having a good day and all geared up for summer. I am. I'm so ready. And I don't even know why. I'm just, um, the weather's great anyway. So with or without it being summer, I seem to find myself in sunshine. So even when I'm in Utah, I'm kind of, it seems like the sun's just always shining. I don't must be me. I must bring the sunshine out. So I have some questions today. Um, one of them is actually, I'm going out of my own order here, but one is actually, do I have summer plans? And I do. I do. I have great summer plans. My youngest son's getting married in July, and I'm so excited I can't even stand it. Well, I am excited he's getting married, but I'm really excited for the unity of our family and our friends being together and the chance to celebrate him and his lovely bride-to-be. And yeah, it's just been a long time coming, so I'm glad it's finally coming to fruition. So that's part of my summer plans. And because he's getting married in England, I'm going to be there a lot this summer. And normally I'm kind of toing and froing, but the summer is predominantly going to be an English summer. So anybody that's listening to this, please, please, Put English weather into your thoughts and prayers. We need sunshine. And I know I said I'm, I seem to always be in sunshine, except for England. I hope for good weather, not just on the wedding day, which is a given. I'm really hoping for good weather that day, but just all summer, not just for me and my family that's going to be there, but for all the Brits that are desperate for Warm weather, sunshine, but I think it's cool. I think it's summer there now. I think they're having, which is scary because I think they're already having sunshine and warm weather, which means come later in June and July, they may not. So that's kind of sad, but hopefully they will. Hopefully it'll still be, still be nice then. Okay, so yeah, that's that's my summer plan. And then at some point after the wedding, I think that my husband and I may take a long weekend on a beach somewhere, not in England, because by that time, I'm sure the weather will have changed if it was, in fact, glorious weather before then. So that's me. That's that's my summer plan. So I'd love to know what everybody else is doing this summer. So go on my social media or send me a message. Let me know what you're doing this summer so we can talk about it on one of the next episodes. That would be that would be lovely. Another question that's come in is, do you and your husband like the same TV shows? Hmm. Yes and no. He really loves English TV. I do too, as far as the crime dramas go. There's, I mean, I think an English crime drama has to be one of the best viewing pleasures. But he watches older crime things like, I forgot his name. <laughs> I've just gone blank. Anyway, it doesn't matter, but he watches, I don't watch period pieces and he does. And he watches a lot of like darker English humor. I don't, but, but yeah, overall, I think we, we have the same taste in, in TV, English or, or, or otherwise. There's been a lot of really, really good foreign shows and foreign to both of us. So for not English, not American, like like Spanish and French and uh, maybe Danish or Swedish. Not that those are the only definitions of for a lot of Korean. Yeah. I, once upon a time, I said I would never be able to watch anything that was subtitled. I can. I actually, um, yeah, we watch a lot of foreign uh, foreign programs. So... I think my husband likes it because if we're watching something foreign and I have to read the subtitles, that means I'm not looking at my phone while watching TV, which I do do well. I do. And I know we've discussed this before. I've talked, I've talked about this with Gabby. I will be 
on my phone, either playing a game or quickly checking email or whatever. And he'll say, you're not even watching. And I'll relay the last five minutes verbatim to him so he can tell that, yes, not only am I paying attention, but I've got a down pat. So, and it doesn't matter. He still does it. He still, if I'm not staring straight at the TV, it's like, you're not even watching this. I may as well turn it off. I can multitask, but I happen to be an exceptional multitasker. So there. Um, But yeah, but that's why I think he likes us watching things that have subtitles because then he knows I'm paying attention because I have to read it. So yes, we have the same taste in TV shows except for, oh, Agatha Christie things. Like he loves things like that, but that's all too, way too period-y for me. So yes, overall, yes. And sometimes no. Okay. What are your biggest pet peeves? Okay. I know I've done this a million times too, but since my pet peeves grow, I seem to daily have a new pet peeve or the pet peeves I have tend to get more intense the older I get. So um, they seem to be peevier. That's not a word I'm sure, but it should be. So anyway, I do have more that I can name, but I'll give you some that I experienced just today. One, I had an appointment somewhere and I got there five minutes early, which kind of sucks for me because I know that I've got to sit and wait for those five minutes until my appointment actually is starting. Well, my appointment time came and my appointment time went. Five more minutes came and went. And then another five minutes came and went. So by this time, my 1130 appointment was already now 1140. And what I don't get is why people think my time is less valuable than theirs. I know if I'm running late, I'm expected to call. Say I'm stuck in traffic or just whatever, or not even offer an excuse. Just say, running late, sorry, I'll be there in a minute. Wouldn't you think that call and tell you that they're running late, that it would be reciprocated, the courtesy that they expect. That makes me crazy. So there's no real moral to that story, except don't ever turn up early. And once they're five minutes late, you should complain. You should go to the reception area or wherever and complain and say you've got to leave. And then it usually helps, it usually helps speed up the process. So um, yeah, don't turn up early especially somebody like me that's so neurotic about time. Everything, it seems like everything in my life is like 1 to 1.30, I'm going to eat lunch. 1.30 to 2, I'm going to, you know, check my emails, 2 to 2.30, whatever. That's my day. It's not just a calendar by meeting times. It's about everything. Next, and one of these happened on my way to my meeting that was running late, is driver's. I cannot stand discourteous drivers. And I'm not trying to sound all high and mighty here or think that I'm the most righteous, polite. I'm I'm polite. And maybe I am the most polite person I know because I certainly must be the most polite driver I know. I turn my indicator on as I'm pulling out of my driveway. Nobody's behind me, so I don't need it on. But it's just habit. If I'm turning right, it goes on. If I'm turning left, it goes on. But yeah, that's a bit obsessive or a bit neurotic doing it out of your driveway. But so as far as car pet peeves go, being behind somebody without somebody that's not using their turn indicator really bothers me to the point where I have followed people before and done like this for them to roll down the window. Not that anybody still rolls down their window like this. I should be just showing the button sign. And I've told them that their indicator is broken. So... They take the hint that it was noticed and aggravated me. Not that they care, but I feel better. So and ultimately, that's, I guess, what it's all about. However, you make it through your day feeling all right. So, but I did notice this weekend, I was doing a lot of highway driving. And why do people get in the fast lane when they're not going fast or when they're not passing another car? So in England, there's distinctly, as here, there's two or three different lanes on the highway. But in England, they follow the rule. If you're going slow, you're in the slow lane. And if you need to pass somebody because they're going too slow, you do it in the middle lane. 
and then if everybody in the slow lane is going slowly, you move to the middle lane. And then when that's going slow, you pass that cart from the fast lane. So people actually use whatever lanes they're meant to use. Those lanes really have a meaning and people really, really use them properly. And here it's really frustrating when, and it's not a geographic thing, it's an every place here thing. I think people just either selfishly think that fast lanes only for them or the middle lanes only for them or they're too good for the slow lane. I don't really know what people think, but I think people should take a minute when they're behind the wheel and realize that there's a reason for these lanes. They're not all three meant to be equal. So big, big pet peeve of mine. Okay, another thing that I experienced today, but I always experience, but I experienced it in two different parking lots today, is why people think that the white lines in the parking lots, the lines that you're meant to park in between, that your tire is supposed to, they, I think sometimes people think your tire is supposed to be on the one of those white lines. And I'm not a great parker, but if I get out of the car, go to walk away and I see that one of my tires is actually on a line and it's going to affect the person next to me, I move it, get back in the car, back up, pull forward, whatever it takes, until I'm inside my own designated space. I don't know why that's hard. So that's a big pet peeve. And apologies in advance if I ever, if I ever am running late, I get out of the car and I don't take note, and I am badly parked because I really try um, because it makes me crazy. Those might be my biggest pet peeves. And this is the problem with, with doing a solo show is these are the only questions that I had sent to me. So I can't even really, really wing it. I can't um, come up with more answers for other questions because I don't have any other questions. And I've already discussed summer, so I'm probably out of things to talk about. But I wanted to, I wanted to spend some time today anyway um, oh, I know, I know. This isn't a pet peeve. This is something that I've recently discovered, which is pretty new to me. It all started, I think, when my grandson graduated from kindergarten. And it was so beautiful. It started like, you know, the headmistress's house in the back gardens. And it was just beautiful. But it hit me after that, that everything has graduations these days. Back when I went to school, there were two graduations. High school college, period. And and the same, I guess, when my kids went to school. Now, people graduate from every different step of their educational life. And that's hard. That's really hard. It's hard to, I mean, as a, if I had a, if I was a parent of, um, a household with a few children, I wouldn't be able to keep up. I just, I just, this is so new to me that people do this. And um, I wish I knew when this cha changed, when this happened. And I was speaking to somebody today who has two kids. And one of his kids is getting ready to graduate middle school. I'm like, so is my granddaughter. How did this happen? When did, when did, when did this start taking place? I think... Um, I think the schools are just trying to make it a little more difficult for parents to just chill and not have to feel so stressed because it's all hard work. Um, never mind the clothes and um, just figuring out the, um, when, you, when you have more than one child, figuring out everybody's schedule to accommodate everybody else's schedule. Hard work. Um, Okay, that wasn't a pet peeve. That was just a matter of fact that I wanted to share or really a query that I wanted to ask. When did this happen? How did, how did there become so many graduations? So on that, I'll say goodbye. I know this was short and sweet, but wanted to say hi anyway and wish everybody an, an amazing summer coming up. And, and I'll be back with a whole new guest next. And then I think it'll be Gabby's turn to be back. So thanks for tuning in to Gabbing with Girlfriends. And that's it. Bye for now. 
Thanks so much for tuning in today and be sure to follow Gabbing with Girlfriends on here so you never miss an episode. You can also find us on social media for more fun and in-depth conversations. Thank you.